She is the host of a wonderful storytelling show it's called Sideshow Gashko. And uh, yeah, give it up for that. Uh, she's also uh, been performing a lot at Sid's Request Room. Please welcome Leslie Gashko. Before my husband and I moved to New York, uh, we had this whole other life in Tulsa, Oklahoma, where we were living. We were both uh, high school teachers. We had like a 401k, teacher's retirement. Like we had a savings account. We had a paid for car. Like it was this whole life that had this little bow on it that was like a very nice life. And then in 2006, something happened. And in that year, the Broadway musical Hairspray had this online contest, which I won, and I got to perform on Broadway with the cast of Hairspray. Thank you. Uh, but I gotta tell you, I mentioned that because, to be honest, like there's something very seductive about like dancing around with giant wigs where you're like, I should be doing this all the time. I'm gonna take out my life savings and quit my job. And that's what I did. <laughs> so to save you some details, fast forward six months and about uh, 20 pounds later, uh, I'm sitting in my 300 square foot studio on my futon <laughs> because that's where sadness lives. <laughs> And I'm hanging out with my good pal, Depression. Uh, to this day, have never just been so, like, broke. If you really know what broke, just broke, okay? Literally and emotionally. <laughs> and just miserable. Like, fresh fruits and vegetables, we can't afford those anymore. Like, we don't eat that every day. Every day, we're just eating beans and rice. Canned beans and rice, canned beans and rice. And we're getting that real nice doughy, starchy, like, <laughs> I'm sad <laughs> kind of face going. And like, I thought all of that was just like a low point. I thought that, no, no, no. The low point came when I was sitting on said futon. This mouse comes out from behind the stove, roots around in the trash. There's no food there. Uh, <laughs> jumps out, I swear, and just like sits and just goes, just like tilts it, like pity from this mouse. And like, oh, you poor country mice. You didn't know. You didn't know when you came here. And that just tipped whatever scale I was on. I was like, that's it. Like, I have to get out of here. I have to get out of here. Had no money to go anywhere. But I knew that that night there was this tree lighting ceremony in Bryant Park. And they were going to have these Broadway singers and ice skaters. And I said to my husband, I was like, I have to get out of here. I was like, do you want to come with me to see the Broadway singers and the skaters? And he's heterosexual, so he said no. Um, <laughs> so I was like, fine, I'm going by myself. So I make my way down to Bryant Park. And just as I'm getting closer and closer, I'm getting angrier and angrier. Like, this gamble to New York didn't pay off. Like, I had a whole life. Like, I've just ruined my life. And the only consolation I had was I was like, at least at the end of this, I'm going to have like a nice, enjoyable New York night. <laughs> That's everyone who's been to the tree lighting ceremony <laughs> at Prime <laughs> Park. <laughs> Wrong. You know, I get there, and it is just that, you know, swarm of where it's like free event, you know, and it's <laughs> tourists. Everyone's from Europe, and they're like, let's. Uh. So, like, I get there, it's wall to wall people. And I'm just muscling my way through, and I get in the middle, I get stuck, I can't see anything. There's this woman behind me, and every, it's so close. Every time she moves her hand, it's just like on my ass. I literally, at one point, turn around, I go, if you don't stop what you're doing, I'm charging you for that feel. She's like, whoa, tis the season. I'm that person in the crowd. There's this older, like this cute older gentleman in front of me. He keeps turning around, like looking at me. I'm like, what's this dude's problem? So finally, He's like, excuse me, miss, I noticed you're not having a good time. And I was like, eh. And uh, <laughs> he was like, do you want my spot? I can, I can see everything from here. And I was like, eh, because I'm committed to being an asshole now. <laughs> so he's like, no, no, take my spot. And he just pushes me into his spot. And even though it's like only one person, like depth difference, like I can see everything. Like I can see the tree and I can see the skaters and the singers. And like, and honestly for a while, like I do forget all this bullshit. And it is like one of those like only in New York moments where you're like, this is why I came, like this is really cool. And so after a while, 
you know, it's getting later and I'm getting cold and I turn around and I was like, oh, you can have your spot back. I have to head home. And he's like, oh, I'm actually heading out myself. I'll, you know, I'll walk out with you. And so I kind of follow him and we muscle our way out and we get out in the perimeter and then I was like, well, thanks again for your spot. And he's like, sure. He's like, miss, can I just tell you something? I was like, okay. And he goes, I just want to say, I think you're a very beautiful woman. <laughs> and it was like the first nice thing anyone <laughs> said since I moved to New York with my rice face. I was like, thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you for being <Dana>, beautiful. <laughs> and then he says, and I'd like to offer you $100,000 to sleep with you. Squidly did it, what, say that again? Yes, I'd like to offer you $100,000 to sleep with you. And I was like, it's a Christmas miracle! <laughs> but like in the worst possible packaging. Like in my mind all this time, I was like, he's an adorable shoe cobbler. Like, not like <laughs> the ghost of Christmas prostitution. <laughs> And as like I'm looking at him, it, like all I see are the beans and rice being like, do it, do it, like do him, do this dude. And it's like the angel and the devil, it's like, take the money, take the money. And then it's like, remember what your mom told you? I was like, yes, remember the thing my mom told me. What's the thing my mom used to tell me? Uh, uh, oh, don't be a whore. <laughs> don't be a whore. Now I kind of, I just want to take a second here, guys. I really want to break this down for you, okay? A hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> Do you know what you can buy with a hundred thousand dollars? Lettuce. <laughs> Produce. Like you can buy these things with that money. And as I'm like listening to him, he's just laying it on thicker and thicker. He's like, this is the hotel I'm going to take you to. And I have the penthouse suite. And we're going to get room service. And I'm an excellent lover. And I was just like, uh, like it's starting to sound good. So I was like, must leave. Mu like, like, like emergency plan kicked in, must get out. Um, so I was like, I'm, I'm sorry, I have to go, I have to go. And he, he said, well, are you going to the subway? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, well, let me accompany you there. And I was like, oh, he's a gentleman too. <laughs> so he walks me to the subway and we actually have like a really nice conversation. I mean, for him like being a sexual predator and all. <laughs> but <laughs> very pleasant and we get to the subway and before we leave he takes my hand he kisses it and he goes is there anything else I can do to convince you and I don't know why I said this next thing <laughs> but I go listen if we're both here next year like <laughs> like like, I don't even need to say anymore. I, like, I wanted it to be like the sleepless in Seattle thing, like, oh, I'll meet you at the Empire State Building. But it, it was really just like, okay, uh, if like in a year, I'm still broke and you're still horny, like we'll lock it down. Like it was very much <laughs> like a business transaction. So you kiss my hand and he goes and I go in the subway. And I'm thinking about this all the way home, like what the hell just happened? And I get home, I open the door, my husband's there and I go, you are not going to believe the night that I had. And I tell him everything, like every little specific detail. And when I finish, it's just silence, <laughs> which is the part of my marriage where I learned, oh, you don't tell your spouse everything. You don't tell them to make this work. You don't tell them everything that happens. And finally, he speaks. And when he does, he says, so like, how is he gonna pay you, with a check? <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank you, Robin. Here comes the world 